good evening for Bible study today. It's been a busy week at St. Michael's. We've had uh, children throughout this building all day long through the whole week. Uh, I get to make this study after they're gone tonight. It's a good thing. We're in these little bits that are in between our readings on Sunday morning, and we have two of them that we want to focus on tonight. And they occur in, in uh, Matthew chapter 13. So if you have your Bible handy, why don't you open up to that and follow along with where we're at. We start uh, right after the parable of the sower, which we heard on Sunday, this past Sunday. And we get an explanation to the parable of the sower that starts in verse 18. But from verses 10 through 17, Jesus starts to talk about parables themselves. And the disciples come up to him and ask, why do you keep talking in parables? I don't know if you've ever read parables. They're kind of hard to understand once in a while. And his answer is really interesting. To you it has been given to know the secrets of the kingdom of heaven. But to them, it has not been given. Who are the them? Who is the you? Those are really interesting questions. I, I think Matthew is talking to his audience a little bit here. To his persecuted Christian audience. His Jewish Christian audience. To those who understand who Jesus is. To them, it's been given to know. And the parables uh, present a way for Jesus to speak that is both enlightening and clear and opaque at the same time. It seems to serve that, that same function. He goes on to quote a passage from Isaiah as he does it. Um, this is indeed fulfilled with the prophecy that Isaiah says, you will indeed listen, but you will never understand. You will indeed look, but you will never perceive. For this people's heart has grown dull, and their ears are hard of hearing, and they have shut their eyes so that they might not look with their eyes, and listen with their ears, and understand with their heart, and turn, and I would heal them. But blessed are you, Jesus says. For they see, are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. I tell you, many prophets and righteous people long to see what you see, but did not see it. And to hear what you hear, but did not hear it. Jesus is talking about the purpose and the nature of the parables that he speaks to us today. And these parables are... Very, very interesting stories. By all accounts, we know there were other people who used this form of teaching and literature in the ancient world, but Jesus of Nazareth, our Lord, is the greatest of all time. His parables are so deep and they are so rich. I really hope and pray you'll just spend a little time in chapter 13. Jesus says they are a way to enlighten you and that your ears hear and your eyes see. That is a gift of the Holy Spirit, my friends. That is one of the things that, that happens on Pentecost when he pours that out on all of us that the words of Jesus suddenly become different. Don't be surprised, in other words, because if you remember, Jesus puts this right in between the parable of the sower, where he throws the seed and three out of four times it doesn't work. Jesus is really explaining what it is that's going on here, that some of this is innate to his word. It's good word. It is truth. It is the very revelation of God. But hearts grown dull. Ears that are closed and eyes that are screwed shut. Will not see, will not hear, will not perceive and understand. That's the very nature of the kingdom. 
And that's kind of the way that it's going to work. This Sunday, we are going to hear Jesus tell the parable of the wheat and the weeds. Now, in this parable, Jesus explains a little bit of an interpretation of why we see what we see now. What is going on in this strange world in which we live? How is it that good and evil sometimes seem so mingled together, even within our own lives, our own heart? We find both good and evil. Why is it that way? Did God make us bad? No, will say Jesus. Jesus says, no, it's not that way. There is an evil one who has sown an evil seed. And right now, those two grow together, evil and good. Jesus' ultimate answer in the parable is one of trust. Wait. A reckoning will happen. The evil and the good will be separated. There will be judgment for the evil, blessing for the good. But now we must trust and we must wait. Again, with the parable of the weeds, we get a little explanation. But again, in between the parable itself and the, the, uh, uh, and the explanation, we get some more material. Turn to chapter 13, verse 31. Here, Matthew inserts two parables and another word about the use of parables. He put before them a parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all the seeds, but when it is grown, it is the greatest of shrubs and becomes a tree so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. He's told us about a sower who sows, it is the word of God. He's told us about a God who sows, and it is the very world in which it grows. Now we have a mustard seed. And he says a tiny little thing that grows to be a great shrub in which even the birds of the air can rest and make a nest. I've always thought this parable maybe would be best understood as don't judge a book by its cover. The kingdom of God This thing we say on Sunday morning, these words we speak, this life we live, this thing we live in, doesn't look like much to the world or even sometimes to ourselves. It looks like there's no way that that could work. There's no way that could function. It could succeed. But Jesus says, you just watch. Just watch and see what I can do with little. It is like that, a mustard seed. And then he goes on to reinforce that with a second parable that's kind of along the same lines. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed with three measures of flour until all of it was leavened. Here we have an even more perhaps graphic illustration of this nature of the kingdom, of this seed that God is sowing of us. Again, if you've ever made bread, you know that yeast doesn't really look like much. In fact, it doesn't really look like anything you'd want to eat. And yet, people who have been making bread for millennia will tell you that without yeast, bread is not much. It needs that leavening. It releases certain vitamins within it that makes it more nutritious. But more than that, by its expansion, by its leavening of the whole batch, it makes it better. It tastes better. This parable has a rather interesting little twist to it. Did you hear what Jesus said? He says, it's this woman takes some yeast and puts it into three measures of flour. If our understanding of the measures is correct, and we're pretty sure it is, this would be like a hundred pounds of dough. 
this is bread on an industrial scale. I have this picture of, you know, I, I oftentimes when I first heard this parable, I had this image of, you know, my grandmother used to make bread and she would have these, you know, three or four loaves, five loaves of bread she would put into the oven. and things. No, this woman is up to her armpits in this bread dough. It is, to knead this and to get this all stirred up must have been an enormous task. Jesus is saying that this world is big. But a little leaven, a little bit of this yeast, a little bit of this gospel, a little bit of this good news, like a mustard seed, can do far more than you ever thought it could. And Jesus told the crowds all these things in parables. Without a parable, he told them nothing. He seems to have really relied on this as a rhetorical device. This was to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet. I will open my mouth to speak in parables, and I will proclaim what has been hidden from the foundation of the world. These words of Jesus bear close inspection. Spend some time with them. Read them carefully. Listen to what a sower and wheat in the weeds have to say to you as they call us to trust and to believe. We'll see you on Sunday. God bless you.